and azure monitors azure log analytics azure sentinels and he's a good he's got a good experience in msi packaging and application virtualization he's a guy who has worked in uh, multiple projects which uh, and uh, does lots of internal trainings for azure monitor and azure automation click once and basics uh, of azure is also an mct trainer currently works as a technology consultant uh, so i will just leave the stage to you keshav thanks for thank it. you thank you so just a confirmation like my screen is visible right yes keshav sure, it is visible now sure thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot for organizing such a wonderful session so uh, good morning everyone uh, and well, very welcome to the global azure uh, 2021 my name is keshav and in this session i'm going to walk you through azure sentinel model modern day siem tool for uh, uh, security operation center we call it as a soc so we will see how azure sentinel is going to help to build the uh, foundation for a cost effective and highly automated cloud security platform and helping the socs uh, with the modern day technologies so uh, just a quick introduction actually it's again introduction um, already uh, kartikeyan has told about me but yeah just in a, a half a minute thing um, so my name is keshav i'm a Microsoft certified trainer uh, holds around 13 plus years of experience in infrastructure management application packaging uh, .net deployment uh, azure technologies like azure log analytics azure monitor azure sentinel and azure automation these three four technologies are very close to my heart uh, i also worked on a system center operations manager and recently i started the uh, exploring the uh, the microsoft defender and azure security center and other uh, security aspect uh, before we start a session just a very uh, small disclaimer disclaimer uh, whatever i'm going to present here all are my own views uh, the content for the session the session i uh, collected by visiting various microsoft blogs uh, articles books and uh, lot of newsletter i keep following so i have collected the information from there in any case i'm not going to represent my uh, employer strategies or my client security strategies or their siem or a soar uh, strategies so yeah uh, that's about the um, the introductions um, and other stuff so let's uh, quickly start the session so for three four minutes we will just talk about some of the terminology like soc siem and so air because if somebody is not from this domain just to give them what these all stand for so the first thing that comes is the uh, security operation center so the security operation center uh, is a team that continuously monitor and analyzes the security procedures they look into the daily uh, security aspects and many other things actually it acts like the hub that uh, collects telemetry from uh, across an organization it infrastructure and further analyze it and thus helping organization to protect itself from the vulnerable uh, threats like cyber threats or uh, many other threats like solar gate or anything that that comes in they are primarily responsible for identifying analyze and react to the uh, cyber security threats uh, investigate uh suspicious activities contain and prevent them uh, they also help us in reducing the downtime that can happen due to the uh, security failure so they also try to help us in reducing the downtime and help us in ensuring the business runs continuously at high level like uh, what sie uh, what soc is like they are responsible for log management security incident event management or security or orchestration and automated response vulnerability management incident response like dealing with the incidents and intrusion prevention and detection uh, the another important concept is about siem uh, uh, most of you know that siem stands for uh, security information and event management uh, in a short i mean uh, on the screen there is a gartner definition what gartner uh, called siem and what they think but in short 
it is a system that has a log files security alerts and events that is like uh, stored at one place so it's a tool uh, a tool to do the log management system that's specialized for the security so siem tools are like they help us in monitoring the security things identifying the security alerts and analyzing it and uh, how to take actions on the incidents uh, how to automate it how to do uh, response to the incident whom to assign incident these all things are like related to the siem uh, so another important topic is about like soar soar that's our called security orchestration automation and response uh, this uh, again the gartner what gartner call uh, called soar it's on the screen but in short i mean it's a tool that help us in doing the vulnerability management incident response and more importantly bringing the automation to our uh, to to the security operation team uh, like how we can enable the automation how we can take an action on the incident and and like it's like we get an alert in the siem tool and then performing a triage by leveraging the combination of the human and the machine power so here we can just uh, build the automation a very important thing i am sure like most of you have read this news somewhere over the twitter or anywhere like on any uh, public platform that microsoft has made around 10 billion uh, uh, dollar business in 2020 um, and the sentinel is the like as the biggest contributor to the uh, microsoft security business sentinel it's like a emerging tool i have seen people are talking a lot about the about the sentinel as per some microsoft data like 9000 customers are already using the azure sentinel uh, since september 2019 when this tool came into the uh, into the uh, thing in the general release there is some uh, report about the talk total economic uh, impact so i'm not going to read about it i mean uh, once the uh, slides are shared you can read about it over the github and somewhere else but more importantly like microsoft has made a very very serious and heavy uh, investment in the security in the last few years uh, gone are the days when uh, the microsoft antivirus was not that water type we, we just used to ignore the microsoft antivirus but since then uh, we have microsoft has made a very very uh, solid investment and they are taking the security as a very serious thing and uh, they are quite active i mean helping the organization to maintain their security postures or uh, everything related to the security a uh, couple of more uh, slides for uh, introduction and then we will start jumping into the real time demo uh, i can understand it may be a little bit boring but then just a quick introduction and then we will jump to the real things so in this session uh, we are going to talk about how sentinel can help you help you uh, in the soc operations or uh, it's a modern day tool uh, the digital transformation how it can bring the digital transformation into your security operation center so uh, sentinel is a cloud native a complete cloud native siem and uh, SOA tool. I mean, it's a tool that can do both SIEM security incident event management and security orchestration automated response. Uh, it completely eliminates the uh, the need of heavy infrastructure and their com complexity because it's in the cloud and uh, we can easily uh, manage it uh, because it's on a cloud. We just go to the Azure portal and manage it from there. Uh, it has a capabilities of uh, investing the security uh, data collected from multiple cloud and on premises uh, it can analyze the large volume of data and you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure uh, with the traditional sim you might have to worry about when the large chunk of volume comes in uh, people get worried that it may uh, it may uh, impact uh, the infrastructure on the same tool is running, but here we don't have to worry about it. I mean, it can help us in dashboarding capabilities, alert triaging, and many other things. That's a uh, that's a core responsibility of the SOC. So, 
in short we can call this as a sentinel is a cloud based security analytical tool that is addressing the challenges faced by the uh, security operations center teams uh, so uh, sentinel can collect the data it can detect the threats it provides you the option of hunting dashboarding with which you can detect the threat it gives you an option of investigating the incident and responding it responding to the incident and many other things uh, so why um, actually sentinel is in demand first thing because due to the cloud second is microsoft is uh, owns the sentinel microsoft owns the windows microsoft owns the azure microsoft is making heavy investment in the security so that's the reason like uh, uh, sentinel is in demand it's on a cloud so we don't have to worry about the licensing or uh, any other thing we just have to pay whatever we are using uh, if you are from the uh, siem domain then you know there is a bit of headache in managing the siem environment itself you need a, a group of people a big team to manage the infrastructure they may not be uh, the the team may not be uh, uh, expert in siem but they are experts in how uh, to manage the infrastructure where siem tool is running uh, we don't have to install any servers in the on premises or in the cloud uh, and it provides you an option of integrating with third party clouds amazon google uh, ibm clouds and you can write your own things and it's help you in like enabling end to end security operations so let's jump to the azure portal and let's have a look how the uh, sentinel looks like and how it works and then we will again come back to the slides so i'm going to open my azure portal uh, here is the azure portal uh, so to access the sentinel uh, either you can just type azure sentinel here start accessing it from here and uh, i mean if it's already configured you can use it here otherwise we will just see how we can configure the azure sentinel so very important thing about the azure sentinel is it totally depend on the log analytics log analytics workspace azure log analytics works with that's part of the azure monitor so uh, it uses the azure log analytics workspace as a basic infrastructure where the data stores where all the telemetry stores and from where we can fetch up the data so to create a sentinel like when you click on the create it's not give you the uh, option to create a new sentinel it will ask you to create a either a new log analytics workspace or link it with your existing log analytics workspace so i will just click on new workspace here again is it's not talking about sentinel workspace it's talking about the log analytics workspace on which our sentinel will uh, will stand upon so quickly i will select anything say global azure 2021 and i will just deploy it uh, these are some concepts specific to the uh, uh, log analytics workspace, the billing, uh, pay as you go, uh, pay as you go, like how much data you are inserting into the log analytics workspace, you have to pay for it. And then let's create it. So here again, I will say like we are not creating the Sentinel. We are just creating the log analytics workspace with which our sent. Sen so there is a small <coughs> disturbance in your mic. Can you like... Uh, yeah, Mike. Better now. Away from your, better away a little bit more away. Better now. Perfect. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sorry. Uh, sorry for uh, disturbance. Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah. Like so, we have just created this global Azure 2021 log analytics workspace, and now we are going to attach it with the Sentinel. So I'm gonna click on Add, and then it's going to. Uh, create a sentinel infrastructure where i can where i can do the things so uh, it'll it'll hardly take one or two minutes here we can see the progress and then here is our uh, as our sentinel so i'm not going to use this i have already configured this uh, this workspace where i can uh, use up the things so again coming back to the azure sentinel uh, here you can see this is now a test and, but I'm going to use this 
this one where I have a lot of things. So this is how it's quite simple to create the Azure Sentinel, but then uh, you have to keep a lot of things in mind uh, about the size of the log analytics workspace, the reason where you are deploying deploying the, uh, the log analytics workspace and other things. Uh, there are a lot of guidelines available over the net. You can follow them for uh, configuring the log analytics workspace. So I totally come from the log analytics workspace and then I moved into the Sentinel, but most of you maybe comes from the uh, other way around, like from the SIEM background and log analytics workspace may be new to you. In that case, I mean, it's not a very big, de a big thing to learn. I mean, you can just follow a couple of articles and then you can uh, have a good understanding how log analytics works. And if you have ever worked on the monitoring tool, then you can easily correlate the things. So here, uh, this is a view about the uh, Azure Sentinel, how Sentinel looks like. We have these many options. Uh, we will come to all of these uh, in a little bit. Let's quickly move to the slides. Uh, so yeah. Just moving back to the slide. So we talked about the log analytics workspace. Uh, so to configure the Sentinel, we need the log analytics workspace. It's a part of the Azure monitor. Overall concept is the Azure monitor. There we have two things, application inside workspace and the log analytics workspace. And uh, it's built upon highly scalable uh, log analytics workspace. Uh, it can act as a, I mean, uh, a place where you will be sending out your telemetry data agents will be collecting the telemetry data everything will be stored here and when the, the things are projected over the dashboard in background it will be pulling up the data from the uh, log analytics workspace so once you have configured the azure sentinel uh, uh, workspace integrated with the la workspace it's just an open container. I mean, it, it's a box that doesn't have many things. Now, there is a concept called data connectors. So data connectors are something that actually pulls up the data from the resources. I mean, it can pull up the data from any of the Azure resources uh, uh, with few exceptions. Almost every Azure resources can coordinate, connect with the log analytics. And from there, we can pull up the data to the Sentinel. Uh, Connectors are kind of uh, responsible uh, for pulling up the data from third party clouds or the defender or from anything. There are wide variety of connector available, such as important, some important aspect are Office 365 connector, Azure Defender connector, Azure Active Directory connectors, or you can do the monitoring of your own firewalls. Uh, we have tried setting up for the Iron Port, Cisco, Microsoft Firewall, a lot of things. and uh, if you are from the Linux background, you know how important it is the syslog servers or the common event format. It it can help you in doing that also. And I mean, uh, now the Microsoft has released uh, PowerShell modules, API, so you can have your own things. So in short, uh, there are three, four types of connectors available. The native connectors, the direct connectors, API-based connectors, and the agent-based connectors. Native are something like Azure Active Directory, uh, for configuring, you don't have to do anything. Just go and click on connect. Direct connectors are someone uh, like the uh, AWS Cloud Trail or the Fireball that will directly send out the data. API, you can write your own APIs and the agent base is like from any Windows machine you want to collect the event logs, security logs or DNS log. You just have to deploy the agent and uh, they will start sending out the data. And these most of the connectors are actually uh, powered by the Graph Security API. Uh, some of the connectors are uh, heavily depend on the Graph Security API. It is used to access the data. Uh, API collects information from many different uh, security platform uh, like the Azure Active Directory, Azure Security Center, Intune, and other stuff. So let's jump to the connector. Uh, like once you have your uh, Sentinel workspace ready. The second thing that you need to do is to work on the connectors. So to work on the connector, that's that's part of the configuration. So you have to come here. And now here you can see how many connectors are available. 98 connectors are available. And this like 
I mean, next week or say next month when you comes here, you you will see this number has gone more than hundred. Microsoft is like uh, increasing the connectors day by day, and it's not only about the Microsoft connector. I mean, uh, you have like Akemi, uh, Amazon, Apache, lot of things. Cisco, lot of connectors are available. Even the Pulse, Pulse VPN, uh, Salesforce, lot of things. So. Uh, to set up the connector, uh, you just have to actually uh, go into uh, these things. I mean, for example, we want to set up the Azure Active Directory connector. I mean, if it's in a green, like this green, this uh, vertical green line, that means it's already connected. So let me switch to this one. If I see if I can reconnect any of the connector. So let's see uh, Azure Active Directory. So we just have to click on open connector page. And now the very good thing that I know about the layout of this tool, the way information it is presented here. I mean, even if it's, uh, if you are new to these all things, you can start reading it from here. I mean, it's very essential to read. Everything is uh, mentioned here. Uh, if you have some idea about the log analytic, then you can correlate. So what it is saying, like once I enable the uh, Azure Active Directory based connector, it's going to give me the information about these all like logs, sign in logs, audit logs, a lot of logs are available. So in order to configure this, uh, these are some prerequisites created here and we just have to like select what all information we want to pull up into our Sentinel and then click on the apply changes. Uh, it will hardly take one minute, uh, sorry, uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds. And after that, you can have the things. And then after the instruction, this is something that I really love is uh, the next steps. They tell you about once you have this connector available, these kind of data, you will have these kind of uh, incident you have, you can have, uh, these things can help you in doing the things. So we have configured the Azure Active Directory based connector. I will just pick up one or two uh, Azure Active uh, activity. It's a very simple like uh, uh, click on this one and uh, select like just connect on it. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, maybe a little bit tricky for new one, but then everything is available here. Now the best thing about the connector is like if you are in the uh, licensing like E3 licensing, E5 licensing, and if your organization have the E5 li license, then you can make use of these Defender connector. They are like one of the best type of connector available. A uh, few of them are still in a preview, but they, they gives a lot of information. I mean, a uh, lot of raw data that's needed for the S SOC security operation center to perform the actions uh, can be pulled up with the help of these defender connectors. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that e E5 license in my lab. So I'll just uh, show you here how, what all things you can do it. I mean, uh, you just have to like click on these all things and then uh, it can pick the information about the device info and everything. Uh, I mean, although it's giving me this option but i may not be able to gather the information uh here like introduction about the defender uh, uh like whatever the incident raised into the defender can come to the sentinel so you don't have to be like two team you don't need two teams like the the team that manages the defender incident and the team that manages the siem incident because with this connector the data can arrive into the uh, sentinel and from there you can take a uh, look uh, i mean you can look into these all things so uh, it's quite simple i'm going to just click on the apply changes so it will start uh, collecting the data and you see this m cache uh, identity, these all things can help you in doing the things, a uh, lot of security specific things. Then uh, uh, we have this defender thing. Uh, we have uh, firewalls, Barracuda firewall, lot of firewalls are there, they can do it. Or you can say like syslog, syslogs are there. Uh, like syslog, what you need to do is, uh, it depends on the Linux Linux infrastructure. So what it does, like it's an agent kind of a connectors available. Uh, you just have to deploy the log analytics agent over the virtual machines that is configured as a six syslog server. Once the agent is uh, 
deployed then you have to make some settings uh, as i uh, told initially that log of uh, the sentinel it's, it's uses the log analytics workspace in the background so you can you just have to uh, in some cases we have to make use of the uh, log analytics settings so we'll just go to the log analytics setting and here we just have to add the facility so i say auth uh, thing and i think like it's called local oh sorry say local zero or uh, let's say syslog so here we can control the cost i mean if you want everything everything can come here if you want limited thing alerts critical thing you can choose it here and just click on apply changes so what it will do is once the changes are applied it's going to bring up the data from your uh, uh, from your linux machine and then you can analyze that for your uh, for your uh, uh, identifying the threats and many things so what i will do is i will just quickly go to my Login, sorry to my Azure portal and I will just try to restart or do some actions on my virtual machine so that we may have some data for the syslog. Okay, I will just do restart. Okay, up maybe after five, 10 minutes we'll have some data. So let's quickly uh, move back to the uh, presentation presentation uh, to the slides. So I talked about the graph security API. I mean, uh, if you are more into the writing, you own uh, writing your own apis then you can make your own graph security api you can develop your own uh, custom connector that can bring up the data from your applications also so it's a core uh, to know about the graph security api but i mean it's it's not something very mandatory that you should know i mean you can if you are more in the socs thing then you can learn it later on now there is a very important concept that called threat intelligence so threat intelligence it's it's about like um, i mean if you talk about the cy cyber security it's a very uh, uh, i mean you can call it as a very complex or a bit complex or a, a little bit complex thing uh, because uh, due to the sophistication of the attacks like the sophistication of the hackers or the attackers they have made the uh, uh, cyber security little bit challenging and it is very difficult for organization to keep track of all kind of vulnerabilities uh, like to gain an understanding what to look for and deciding what to do when you uh, when you see a system anomaly or any potential threat it's a very uh, complex and a challenging thing but now here the threat intelligence comes into the picture threat intelligence what it does it it will uh, provide the list of the indi indi uh, indicator for detect detection and blocking the malicious activities uh, I mean, even the Microsoft provides access to its own threat intelligence uh, feeds. It makes use of the TI uh, indicator API, and it can also work with a lot of open source threat indicator data from the public servers to identify, um, analyze, and respond to the threat activities. So if you are from the SIEM uh, background, I'm sure you might, might have heard about the terms like uh, uh, ATT and CK or uh, Taxi, Taxi, uh, Trusted Automated Exchange of Indicator Information, or Adversarial Tactics, Technologies, and Common Knowledge. So these all things can be integrated with the Sentinel with the help of the Threat Intelligence. Uh, right now, Threat Intelligence is in a preview, but I mean, it's ready for launch. I mean, uh, I mean, it can help you with a lot of things. So let's go back to the, uh, okay. Threat management. Uh, so we talked about uh, the data connectors. Data connectors will bring the raw data. I mean, uh, once you configured your uh, uh, your log analytics workspace and the Sentinel workspace, you have the raw data. Like, I mean, if you go to the logs, and uh, here you can see uh, what all logs you have. So I will show what all information we collected in the last 30 minutes 
this is powered by kql queries that's called custo query languages it's a part of the uh, i mean it's a concept that comes from the uh, um, data data uh, what you data explorer as our data explorer oh okay sorry this is a new workspace so we may not see it let me just do the copy thing and i will just go to the ignite docs so i am talking about the raw data that we have it here not gonna run it for the one or uh, say 24 hours because we have heavy data and it will take little bit time to pulls up so uh, we are just trying to find out uh, what all data we have so if you are seeing this query these are you may find it similar to the sql uh, uh, the structured query language sql query languages but they are not the sql query they are similar to it and most of their concept also uh, comes here see the heavy data sometime uh, we have when we have lot of records uh, it will say like you are trying to pull up lot of information it may fail so uh, otherwise i will just modify the query and say this thing we will just say in what all tables we have data let me copy this and see in last 40 or 48 hours we have collected the data into these many tables and once you go to any of the table let's quickly say azure activity in this table this data is into the raw format i mean you cannot make sense i mean a lot of uh, things are provides a lot of thing is in the json format a lot of uh, things are there so to to make sense of this to convert into the meaningful data uh, what you need is that's called uh, the threat management so to do the threat management threat management comes here uh, like this threat management is here so threat management has incident workbooks hunting capabilities uh, entity behavior that's called user entity behavior analytics and the threat intelligence that's in a preview so the data what data will do is data will uh, pull up the information but the uh, threat management will help us in making uh, sense uh, of that raw information we can uh, write how to use the queries and uh, how to format the queries or how to configure the incidents so here uh, we have a lot of things uh, will not spend much time on the presentation we'll just go to the things so hunting capabilities it's like threat hunting it's like proactive remediation so it's something like uh, you came to office and you heard about some kind of attack for say solari get uh, attack happened or hafenium attack happened and uh, the first thing that comes in your mind is to search to see if any of your uh, things are impacted by it then you can make use of the hunting capability so here you have to write those kql custo query languages uh, kql is a very uh, powerful query languages it has intellisense if you can create your own bookmarks and the best thing about the sentinel uh, is the github library uh, the people are contributing to it i mean for each and everything you will see a lot of queries are available so you just have to understand how kql query works in and then you can copy the queries from there and make use of it so it's a uh, hunting you can call it as a proactive thing that can help you in uh, uh, investigating the things or uh, to find out if your infrastructure is impacted or not so to do the hunting what you have to do is you just have to come here to your uh, sentinel uh, portal in that threat management you see hunting and once you come to the hunting page you'll see uh, a lot of things are already available you have uh, queries for a uh, lot of things i mean uh, templates for anything so let's say i'll see if we have solar we have something for uh, solar winds inventory or anything so we just make use of this one so i will or say active directory we have okay we can let's find out about this as our activity uh, ad account lockout so what i will do is i just have to create the query uh, run this query before that uh, if you see this one 
okay let me run this query and then i'll show you that so this query what it will do is it will try to identify uh, whether if i have any ad account logged out i mean if any of the ad account as active directory accounts are logged out or not so it runs any query into the background and try to fetch up the data so it's a uh, my own environment just one account so we don't have that information but these kind of things can help you if you see uh, this one here let me come to again to the hunting capabilities you see oh um, not sure this is about like type of tactics available like initial access or a lot of things are there i mean for some reason it's not getting visible i don't know what but here you see these kind of initial access is there, ex executions are there, or infiltration, impact. I mean, if you are from the SIEM background, you can correlate. So uh, we will click on this one also from here, and it will show show up the things related to the, if anything happens, uh, related to the, um, what is the, about the credential access. And then you have these many queries you can make uh, uh, use of it. So. Uh, we can make use like failed logon attempts to the SQL or tricking password changes, many things. Uh, you can make use of it. Uh, multiple password resets. So if somebody is trying to reset their password again and again, you can find out who all are trying to do that. And then like once you run it, it's going to give you that information. So just sometimes you'll, you'll get confused like when your screen is hidden, you just make sure you keep exploring um, expanding the screen and then run the queries and here you can see a lot of uh, detailed information also so here you can view results we will not have anything uh, because it's just a demo environment so we talked about the hunting capabilities uh, the most important capability that comes up is the uh, alerting capabilities uh, uh, if you are from the SOC or the SIEM, you know how important it is to uh, deal with the incidents, uh, the alerts that are generated um, by any SIEM tools. I mean, because everything depends on it. People will be keeping eye on the incidents, how many incidents are generated, how many incidents are uh, processed, how many are assigned. So Sentinel provides a great facility to deal with the uh, incidents also. Uh, you can call it incident is something like notifying someone when something happens. So it's not a proactive thing. Uh, it's like identify someone when something something wrong happened, may some kind of access breach happened or uh, somebody tried to intrude in your uh, environment. So for those all things, you can have the incident capabilities. Okay, so let's go back to the, in, to the Azure portal. So incident, so like once you come here, you can see the incident which are raised. I'm talking about the incident which are raised in the infrastructure. I'm not talking about how you can create the incident. It will give you the picture about how many incidents are raised in in your uh, infrastructure. You see last 24 hours, you can change it from here also uh, 48 hours, seven days or custom range, anything. So I have created some uh, sample incidents so these incidents are telling me that uh, some critical services are modified in my infrastructure so you can click on this one it will give you the uh, option to investigate also but i don't have enough of data to investigate so that's the reason it is disabled you can just click on the full details uh, here you can see about like what is their eyes uh, what's the name of the incident so i say some critical service are modified so what i did is like any service that is specific to the azure if its state is not running then generate an incident so uh it, it's i have made a uh, mark the tactics as an initial access and the execution so these many things are like these are the information which i can use it for the uh use it for the investigation. If you are configuring your incident correctly, you will have a good amount of information that can be used for uh, for uh, triaging the incident and many things. Now, uh, let's talk about the incident, what we can do with the incident is. So we have this incident and I am the SOC and I want to assign it to someone. Then what I will do is I will pick up this one 
pick this incident come here and i will just assign it to say okay to my colleague ajit so i will just assign this and that this incident is assigned to him uh, and once he 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 can change the state like active so i will just say active incident i can change the severity and many things and uh, from there uh, my colleague can take actions he can uh, investigate he can find out whether it's a, a false positive or it's a true one or many things many actions he can he can perform so what i will do is i will just assign one incident to myself assigned to me apply the incident and then i will just come here and from here i can uh, see up the things incidents are whatever the incident one active incident is there uh, three new incidents are there or something we can perform the actions so once this is assigned to me i can mark it as a uh, something like false positive so i will just do this mark this as a i will just close out this incident closed i will see false positive i it's for demo purpose once it is closed it's closed i mean <clears throat> it will go out of the list so this is how i mean we have lot of options for the incident so i talked about how you can deal with the incident but you need a mechanism of creating the incident then that configuration comes into the picture in the configuration data connector will bring up the data this is the option that's called analytics analytics will help you in creating the incidents so you have uh these all are the active rules these rules are going to create the incidents when something goes wrong otherwise there are plenty of rules available here uh that can be used for configuring the incident so i will just i mean uh, you don't have to actually do much like you don't have to spend your time in configuring the incident everything is ready made templates are ready made you can make use of it so i will say okay create an incident based on the azure security center uh, click on this next step sorry this one make sure this button is sometime hidden sometime i also get confused why the next screen is not coming so just uh, expand it click on create rule uh, everything even the description is written here so i will say uh, so global 2021 and uh just do this and then create so now this alert rule is active and when something it matches the criteria it's going to generate the uh incident for me so we have plenty of templates but it's not limited to the templates if you are good into the uh, kql queries you can make use of this one or i mean you say this logs just a one one minute thing very incident very important uh okay and when when you come to the logs here you have lot of things lot of information available i mean these are also kind of a template that can help you so i'll just pick up security and uh, let's say most active service principal i will just remove some criteria Oh, actually, I don't have service. So search. Table, and I will just pick up any of the table. Say uh, change tracking. Configuration change. And here I can just write out my query. Say. Uh, if you don't know the query make use of the filter uh quickly when any of the change category is removed 
for my machine ignite.ignite.com type should be windows so if it matches matches this criteria then generate an alert rule you can simply create click on um, the sentinel alert rule and fill up the form here you have to do this fill up description what kind of tactics it is i will just make sure initial access uh, there is a good documentation available about kind of a tactics available you can make use of it uh, alert logic here if, if you put all the information uh, it will help you in doing the investigation also this is the query uh, you can do the entity mapping you can do the custom detailing here and a lot of things you can do for creating the templates once this temp these kind of templates are ready uh, you can have the custom template you can have the microsoft provide templates for doing the investigation for generating the uh, incidents or the alert or you can call them as an actionable moments on which you can take the actions now very important thing is the playbook uh, that's called uh, that's part of the uh, uh, Automation. We talked about the SOAR, security orchestration, and the uh, uh, automated response. So here, the playbook comes in the picture. Playbooks are logic app-based playbooks. Uh, so it's something like when a security alarm is raised, uh, the SOC team in some cases needs an assistant from several other teams in order to investigate the issues or to mitigate that threat, or you want to perform some actions there, or uh, in that case, you can make use of the Azure Sentinel playbooks. These are the logic apps that can help you in building the automations. For example, you automatically want to assign incident to someone or uh, there is a very uh, one use case on which we worked upon like uh, if somebody is creating any uh, specific IP uh, into the Azure portal with a specific range or if somebody is creating a virtual machines uh, by and allowing all and opening all the port https port and other kind of ports so we have given the instruction that raise an incident with the help of the analytics and once we have this kind of incident we can take the automated actions like uh, uh, blocking that machine for some time or sending out the notification on the teams or lot of things so that is option is available through the automation and very recently there is the automation based rules also available that can help you in doing the things here uh, you can uh, this new rule is like recently launched thing but you can make use of the playbook playbook is like uh, the logic apps that can help you in doing the things and pulling up the data uh, so i will quickly fill up this Global Azure 2021. There are connectors available into this. Uh, into this, don't get confused with the data connector. Here, the I'm talking about the connector. That's a part of the logic apps. Uh, so here, you'll have your logic apps configured. Go to the resource logic apps. I will look for the Sentinel based connector. Uh, they are, there are a lot of templates are available. I will just select this Sentinel and say when an, when a, uh, when an as our Sentinel incident rule was triggered or, or let's use this when a response to an is triggered. And here I just have to select with Sentinel. So with help of this one, we can do uh, the automated response thing. Um, just trying to uh, explain you in very short because these are the things which actually cannot be explained in one hour or uh, I mean it takes a days or even the week of time to explain these all things or to deal so here I will say okay this one and then new step here add comments to the incident like a lot of options are there uh, it's going to can do the things so I will just save it for now uh, just with this add a comment to the incident that's all i will just save it here okay yes. 
I'm just filling up anything. I mean, you just have to little bit carefully. You have to fill up. I mean, not putting the right information, it will not work. But just for these all things. So this is the like logic app that can perform the uh, automated actions with the help of the logic apps. You can call the functions. You can call the Azure automation run books. You can call the web hooks. Many things. So it provides you this kind of interface. And then uh, if I go back to the uh, Sentinel and uh, in the analytics, we have these incidents. Uh, in the incidents like this one, uh, I want to enable the automation. Then I will just they go to this automation. And uh, after a few minutes, I think this will be available. So I can just attach it from here. So this is how like you can make use of the uh, uh, make use of the playbook. So playbooks, uh, you can see it here as well. Uh, what all kind of playbooks are available. Uh, you can see it under the automation. And once you configure the permission, you can. You can see the uh, the playbook. So this is logic app test like a lot of kind of uh, playbooks are already there. Some of these uh, these already comes from the Sentinel like uh, blocks IP address and zero tickets, a lot of things. So that's about the automation. Uh, one important as expect I think I've not covered that is about the uh, workbook. This is uh, workbooks are kind of a dashboards like if you are working in the big organization. Uh, and you want a lot of dashboards to be created, then you can make use of this workbook capabilities. Again, there are a lot of templates available. Uh, you can make use of the template once you this has already sign in, view this template. So this kind of a template will give you all the information related to the sign in, sign in by location, sign in by details. Uh, you just have to configure this one uh, and then you will have the uh, information. So workbook can be used for uh, viewing the things, uh, for projecting the things over the dashboards that can help you. Uh, so yeah, uh, the another important concept that is, this is also re added very recently, that's called user and entity behavior analytics. So if you want to uh, look about you want to do the investigation about any specific user, then you can come to the entity behavior. By default, once you come here, uh, if you have some big environment, then uh, this can help you in uh, uh, like the account, the user for which you are getting the maximum number of alerts, you will, you will see it. You can directly start the investigation from here, or you can say about the host for which a lot of informations are generated. So I will just search for a machine you can search. This I have the syslog servers. Do I have any information for for it here? Right now, no alert is generated, and uh, we don't have any information because just demo environment. So uh, this gives you about like uh, exploring about the user or about the machine about their behavior. I mean, with this, even you can find out what kind of broadband provider they are, what is their location, and many things. So uh, yeah, uh, so uh, like we talked about various functionality of the uh, uh, of the Sentinel. So with the Sentinel, actually, uh, it's capable of uh, helping your SOC security operation center, uh, and it can bring because Sentinel is a capable of bringing Microsoft own products together. I mean, with the help of the Graph Security API or any other things, you can tie up all together uh, all Microsoft product together and uh, additionally it brings the capabilities for the central uh, like bringing the capability of being a central uh, component of an organization security operation center uh, like a center place you can have incidents you can have alerts everything so like this is how it can help you in uh, uh, Im embedding or enabling your SOC with the modern day tool like the uh, Azure Sentinel. So yeah, uh, that's about, I mean, how you can uh, do the things with the Azure Sentinel. Um, I mean, if there is any questioners or anything, uh, uh, I'm ready for it. I mean, if we can start present posting the questions. So if any questions are there, I'm ready for it.
uh, any uh, questions? I can show as of now there are no questions. There is one question now. Yeah. Uh, does it have a alerting, auto alerting once threat identified so that we can take action? Okay. So it have auto alerting once threat identified. So what so that we can take the yes. What I so yeah. Yeah. So with the help of the logic apps like uh you have the alert and you want to perform some operations like you want to assign it to a specific person you can do it if you have a, a script like that can for example as soon as you uh, find any kind of threat in your infrastructure and you want to isolate that machines you can just have to write the logic app that will uh, just put the machine out of the uh, network or isolate it there are a lot of actions you can perform and it's not only limited to the uh, microsoft templates that are available if you have a very uh, high scripting or a powershell scripting capabilities available you can integrate logic apps with the uh, azure automation based run books or uh, with the function based run book many things you can perform so i mean uh, any kind of actions you can perform you just have to build up a logic uh, we worked on the logic where we want to block the machine that get created with the public ip because we don't want to allow our users to uh, make use of the public ip so as soon as we see any machines where that's deployed with the public ip we just block the machine for a time being until we get the satisfactory response from the user and we analyze that uh, response and then we take an action on it with the help of uh, logic apps we do uh that's actually not very much available hp open view kind of a thing but it's slowly uh, making a progress uh, you can have the uh, integration uh, what i know okay. i have not not read about of the hp open view much but i know it has like service now connectors are available uh, and uh, I'm sure in future you will have these all options also uh, HP OpenView or uh, any existing SIEM tools kind of a thing. But at the moment, I'm not sh I'm very confident that HP OpenView things is not there or maybe it's in a private preview or somewhere. But yeah, service now kind of a things is there. Okay, so uh, next question is, uh, do we have history of activities we perform like audit? Oh, of course, of course, you have plenty of information. Uh, you just have to... Uh, uh, you can, I mean, if you are good in the uh, queries, like these kind of queries, you can write anything. Uh, so I will see what all users are active. So distinct user. Okay. okay. So the next question is, uh, yeah. does Sentinel or Azure have inbuilt alerting capabilities like pager duty notification for SOC? Uh, so you mean happen? like, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, you can send out the notifications to the uh, uh, via email or you can write your own playbooks for posting into, into Teams. You can have your, uh, send it to the SMSs also. Those all capabilities can be developed. By default, uh, things may not be available, but these kind of capabilities can easily be developed. So the next question is, can it integrate with AWS? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, that's a very important thing. Uh, you you go to the uh, sentinel connectors there you'll see just a minute amazon you see amazon amazon web services it can integrate you just have to fill up the form fill up these details whatever is needed and it can easily work work like a charm with it Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Keshav. It was a great thanks. session and there are lots of uh, good reviews about session. People are thanking you and then saying it's a great session. With a great demo. Thanks. Thanks Thank to everyone. Much, uh, stay Thank safe you. and keep exploring the Sentinel. Thank you. Hey, Mangesh. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Okay. So, Mangesh, I'll uh, introduce you.
Uh, Mangesh has uh, experience, seven years of experience in uh, Windows and web-based uh, technologies. He has worked in many uh, web websites and then web projects. He has a uh, very good knowledge in working in many different types of stacks. He's a full stack engineer from Smart Locker. Okay, Mangesh, Mangesh, you can take over. Uh, yeah, uh, can you uh, see my screen? Yes, Mangesh. Mangesh. Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Mangesh. Okay. Uh, so it's a PV. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Kartik. Uh, so uh, so hello, everyone. Good morning, and uh, wish everyone is uh, safe and healthy, and enjoying these uh, uh, these sessions.